Hello, Chelsea here and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about my experiences with menstrual cups as a woman who suffers from vulva pain. In summary, I suffer from a condition called vulvodynia, which is kind of an all-encompassing word kind of describing the experience of chronic pain in the vulva area. So there can be a lot of reasons why someone would develop a condition such as vulvodynia, but I won't get into all of that because uh, that will be a lot of information. But if you want me to do a video about this, then definitely leave a comment below and let me know that you are interested. In summary, my vulvar pain is provoked pain, which simply means that I only feel pain upon contact. So things like tampons can be a really uncomfortable experience for me. So as you can imagine, when I first heard about menstrual cups, I thought, oh, well, I guess that's something that I definitely won't be able to partake in. As for my menstrual history, I have been on birth control for the last 10 or so years, basically just to manage uncomfortable period symptoms. However, this past spring, I have been doing a lot of research about what it means to have a healthy, regular cycle. After everything I learned, I decided that birth control was no longer for me and I quit taking it. I go into a little bit more detail about all of that in this video, so definitely check that out if you want to know more. Around that time, that is when I also started looking into menstrual cups because I knew that my period would become a little more irregular and I wanted something that I would feel a little bit more comfortable using. Not to mention the other benefits of menstrual cups, such as being a healthier and even cheaper option than tampons, as well as being the best environmental option. At first, I did try a softer, smaller cup that would help me get over the learning curve that cups do pose when first starting out. Now, my first time ever using a cup actually coincided with my overseas trip to the UK, so that was a lot of fun. And that more than often meant that I was dealing with this in public restrooms. And of course, my first period off of birth control was a lot heavier, which was also fun to deal with in public restrooms. Thankfully, after the first 12 hours, my period did become more manageable and I was able to enjoy the remainder of my trip. <laughs> so the first cup that I did try out was this Lena Sensitive small, I think, I got the small um, menstrual cup here. And I did really like it. I thought it was really comfortable when wearing it and I didn't have a problem changing it out. This is what it looks like. And yeah, it was definitely a great learning cup, but after my experiences with my sheer heaviness of my periods, I knew that I needed to look for a cup with a higher capacity. I also experienced some issues with my first cup not fully opening up and suctioning and that caused a little bit of leakage so I also knew that I wanted to look for a cup that was a little bit firmer. Upon doing a few comparisons I decided upon the salt cup. They do have a small and a regular but I decided on the regular. So I'll go ahead and show you what the cup looks like. It comes in this cute little pouch. <laughs> And so you just take it out, and this is what the cup looks like. So it is very similar to the Lena cup, and I actually really enjoyed the shape and everything else about the Lena cup. So I know that when I was looking for my higher capacity, firmer cup, that I was going to look for something that was a similar shape. And I think that this definitely has a similar shape. Let me grab the Lena just to show you a comparison side by side. So these are the two side by side, and you can tell that the salt cup definitely has a higher capacity, it's a little bit bigger, but it's really not that big of a difference compared to the Lena Sensitive Cup. And also, I don't know if you can tell just by looking at that, but the salt cup is quite a bit more firm than the Lena cup. So now I'm going to talk about my most recent cycle and my experience with my salt cup. So my most recent cycle was my second cycle using the salt cup and I'm kind of just going to disregard the first cycle because that was just dealing with a brand new cup and I was getting used to it and obviously there were some hiccups but everything was fine. So to start off my second cycle with my salt cup 
was just in general a lot more manageable. I know that my cycles are probably still quite irregular and they pretty much have been very, very heavy up until this most recent cycle, which was lighter and lasted a little bit longer, about seven days or so. In summary, using the salt cup, my period was basically effortless. I just had to change out my cup every 12 hours and, or just whenever I felt like I wanted to refresh it. And while it was in, I felt completely comfortable and I couldn't tell that I had anything in, which is saying a lot for someone who suffers with vulvar pain. So if you are someone who is watching this video to get some tips and tricks on how to try to use a menstrual cup with vulvar pain, I'll give you a couple of my top tips and see if I can quickly go through those for you. So number one is finding a comfortable position. For me, my most comfortable position is just sitting on the toilet. I feel like it takes off the most pressure from my legs and my hips, and I can allow myself to relax more effortlessly than if I tried to do anything standing up or squatting or whatever. Like, I'm not all about that. <laughs> Also, when I'm at home and I have my toilet with the tank behind me, I do tend to lean back onto the tank a little bit just to take further pressure off of my midsection and lower pelvic area. So my second tip is to find the cup fold that works for you. So one thing that you might not think about when you're first learning about menstrual cups is that there are many different ways that you can fold the menstrual cup to make the rim smaller to insert it. So I'll just show you with my salt cup, my preferred fold. And to me, I feel like this fold is what makes the rim the smallest at the very tip. My third tip is do your business before you are messing with the menstrual cup, whether you are inserting or removing it, because you're going to want to be having full control of your pelvic muscles. So if you're holding anything in, that's going to prevent you from completely relaxing. My fourth tip is just practicing as much as you can with the angle of the cup while once you're going to insert it. So. I'm just gonna use the fold that is my favorite. And I guess I'll just kind of show you with my hands here. So this is your back end and then this is your front end. And so you're, when you're sitting on the toilet, you're kind of sitting kind of like this, you know, more or less. And so what you wanna do is insert the cup pointing towards your bum area. And then once it starts to go in, I angle it upwards to start going up and it pops open and we're good to go. So yeah, the cup angle is very important and obviously all of this is just going to take practice. So don't get impatient, don't get frustrated. If you find yourself getting upset or whatever, then just take a break, come back to it and try again. My fifth tip is that once it is inserted, you want to make sure that it has unfolded and has suction. Now, I know the word suction might sound a little daunting. You don't really want anything suctioning up in there, but that is what you want the cup to do because then you know that it is secure and in place and that it won't just fall out. I don't think a cup would ever be able to fall out, but hey. It also ensures that there's not going to be any leaks as well because obviously if you have a leak, then your flow could leak out and nobody wants that, right? So as I was demonstrating, you probably saw that once I got it in, you saw it unfold and sometimes it'll unfold softly like that or it will pop open and you should be able to tell but if you can't while it is mostly in just rotate the cup pinch the bottom just gently kind of urge the sides to open up and you should definitely get there so now my tips for removing the menstrual cup so I guess my first tip again would be to do your business because, well, you'll see with the next tip. So my second tip is to utilize your pelvic muscles to bear down on the cup and urge it downwards. You never ever want to, like with a tampon, grab the stem and just pull it out because 
remember there is that suction going on and you don't ever want to just pull. So bearing down will definitely help to push it downwards so that you can then grab the bottom of the cup, pinch it, break the seal, and pull it out. So I guess I'll go ahead and just demonstrate what I'm talking about. So here we have the cup and it is in and suctioned. So you do not want to pull out because that thing is not gonna come out. What you wanna do is bear down those muscles. So here's the muscles push, pushing it down a little bit. <laughs> And then once you can feel the bottom of the cup, you just want to start pinching. And at this point, I do tend to just pull it just a little bit. I even still rotate it. It's basically the complete opposite of what you were doing to insert it. So I am rotating and I am pinching. And then some pretty much all the time, I will have to reach up a little bit in there, grab it, and really pinch it. And I basically, like I said, I just do the complete opposite of the removal. So I do tend to pinch it just a little bit to come out and then it'll come out and you can empty it in the toilet. And again, yes, I am doing this all while still sitting down because I don't really wanna take this out not over a toilet. <laughs> Now I know that all of this sounds like a lot of trouble if you are just now delving into the menstrual cup world, but it really is worth it in the end. So for me as a woman with vulvar pain, as you can imagine, the removal process is a little bit more painful than insertion. But once I got the hang of the process and I was patient with myself and I just kept practicing, the pain is very short-lived for me and the benefits far outweigh the negatives. Now I know that there are women out there who experience way more chronic, severe pain than I, but for women like me who can tolerate a little bit of pain or have just provoked pain, if you can just get through that insertion and removal process, having the cup in during your menstrual cycle is just a huge game changer and you don't really understand how much of a game changer it is until you start trying it for yourself. One of the reasons that I found the menstrual cup way more beneficial than tampons is because they do not absorb, they collect, I guess. Not only do tampons absorb your menstrual flow, but they also do not discriminate to what fluids they absorb. So they also absorb the natural fluids that line our vaginal canal that keep our environment happy. With a cup, there is no absorbency. It is only collecting the flow that is coming down from your cervix. Therefore, the natural fluids in the vaginal canal are not disturbed and the menstrual cup is able to live more harmoniously in the natural environment. I also felt like when I used tampons that they would just continually hurt inside of me and I never really understood why until I started looking into menstrual cups. So here I'm going to just show you, try to show you what I mean here. So inside you kind of have your cervical opening, which is right here. And so the cup is sitting in the vaginal canal. And depending on where you are in your cycle, your cervix can be sitting high or your cervix can be sitting low. And usually with cups, it doesn't really matter where your cervix sits. So if it sits a little bit lower, then it is able to kind of sit inside the cup a little bit and the cup is not disturbing the cervical opening in any way. Whereas with tampons, that is completely opposite. If my cervix is dropping a little ways into my menstrual cycle, I have that tampon in and it is jabbing my cervical opening. And I would be able to feel that even though I didn't know that that was what it was at the time. And now I don't feel that at all. I can wear my cup through my entire cycle and my cervix is just free to move however high or low it needs to go. And that's another thing is that this cup is also shaped more like your anatomy, whereas the tampon is just like a thing that you shove up there. So yeah, that's definitely another reason why I like to use menstrual cups way more than tampons. So in summary, I do love my salt cup and I think that I have found my Goldilocks cup, which if you've never heard that term before, I thought it was kind of funny too, but it is basically a term that was coined in the menstrual cup community for the perfect cup for your body. And that cup is going to be different for everyone. So I have to say I was lucky and I only had to try out two cups before I found my Goldilocks cup. But you might have to try three or four cups 
and that's not a bad thing and that's perfectly okay. Also, I actually found this Facebook group that is a menstrual cup, buy, sell, or trade Facebook group. So people who do try those menstrual cups that don't work for them, they're able to trade it in for a cup that they do want to use or they can sell it to someone who wants to try their cup. And I know that sounds really strange, but as long as they are boiling the cup before they send it to you and they're sanitizing it, then it's really not a problem. And once you receive it, you can also sanitize it and boil it and do whatever you need to do to feel at ease. And yeah, there's definitely not a problem with buying, selling, or trading your menstrual cup. So of course, also when I discovered SALT, I joined their Facebook group and I wanted to read what women were saying about their cups. And ever since I started using my cup, I've also started becoming quite active in the Facebook group and just urging women to try it. And you know, if they're having issues with it, then we encourage each other and we give each other tips and tricks. And um, I actually left a really nice comment on a post and the salt company and, you know, whoever the customer representative is that goes in and monitors the Facebook group, they are actually quite active and they are always responding to every single post, to all the comments. And one of them actually responded to my comment about how I love my salt cup and how it's worked really well for me with my vulvar pain. And they asked if they could PM me and pretty much what it ended up being is that they wanted to send me a little thank you care package. So they sent me this little thank you care package for just being so supportive in their Facebook group. And they also asked me to leave a review on their product listing on target.com. So I went in and did that and they sent me this really great package and so they gave me this cute little card and so what she did was she sent me this cup wash which I think is really awesome and it's a regular like full-size tube of cup wash which is awesome instead of just a lame like travel sample size or something they sent me a full-size cup wash which is just so cool and then they also sent me a couple of cute things as well. So we've got like little pins that just have cute little phrases on them. And then pencils. I mean, I just think it's such a random like funny thing to send me pins and pencils. Uh, <laughs> but I just think it's so sweet that they did that. So they just have cute little sayings on them. And yeah, so that's the little package they sent me. And I just wanted to make this video also to talk about how awesome salt is as a company. And I really do love this cup. The firmness is exactly what I wanted. The capacity is exactly what I wanted. And the shape is just awesome. And I have nothing but good things to say about it. Not to mention, above all, it works well with my vulvar pain. And Again, yes, I'm going to experience some discomfort when I'm inserting or removing the cup. That's just a given, but I feel super comfortable with this cup and I'm able to get through those tough moments. And when the cup is in, I'm completely comfortable. I don't feel a thing and it is wonderful. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any other questions about menstrual cups, please leave those questions in the comments below. And if you feel like you got some helpful tips or some good information from this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out and helps more women like you and me see this video. And again, if you do want me to do a video on vulvar pain, vulvodynia, and what can cause it, and what I believe has caused mine, then I would love to do that and just leave me a comment below and let me know that's what you want to see. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Be talking about my experience with menstrual cups. Cumps? Cumps? Hello, this... <laughs> as well as the very obvious environmental reasons as well. Did I say as well already? <laughs> Can I stop saying as well so much? 
At first I tried a softer, smaller cup that would help me get over the learning curve. I cannot look at what I'm reading. <laughs> and I can allow myself to relax more effortlessly. Effortlessly? More effortless. Chelsea here and welcome to another video. And my big dog Indy is trying to come up and say hello. She can't quite get in the frame. Can you move? Okay, go on, go on, go on. I'm gonna have to shut the door. Go lay down, go on. Go lay down. I'll be done shortly. 